What is the secret sin? Oh yeah, invading Christianity, according to one Melissa Duggerty, D- Do- <laughs> Doherty. Doherty on Instagram and YouTube. She is a pretty well-known Christian influencer slash apologetics. Nate, pull that up on the uh, screen. There, we'll we'll get that one dialed in. Nice. All right. Empty feeling of never feeling like God loves you enough because you don't have super spiritual experiences all the time. Then imagine you manufacture those experiences to fill that void that you have created. What I'm describing is mysticism, where you purposely seek a divine spiritual encounter for the purpose of power, maybe to feel super spiritual, manifestations of glory, take your pick. Experience then becomes your truth. And don't put God in a box is a common phrase told to those who would question these things as being outside the realm of how God functions. The bottom line is that it comes down to this. If you've never had one spiritual experience, would Jesus alone be enough for you? Imagine the empty- Mm. I like the way that she sums that up at the end. For you guys, if you uh, kept touching your microphone, would you still be a podcaster? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. That's in his head. I actually don't like the part, the way she ends it. I don't like it. Maybe you can tell me why you do like it. I do like it because I know a lot of people who would say that they they don't have um, what they would describe as spiritual experiences, and they long for that. And for them, that there the uh, the unspoken message there is that um, knowing Jesus isn't enough. Yeah. So how do we know Jesus? I, I guess maybe I'm picking nits in my brain. How does she know Jesus? Like ultimately it's going to come down to some sort of experience. And so where those experiences and seeking those experiences for a lot of Christians, it's just like for most of my life, I, I'm not somebody who's had giant mystical experiences, but there's been a couple times that have kept me anchored into some sort of like, okay, there's something going on outside of my materialism because for the most part, I'm a material guy where it's like, show me the data kind of a thing I want to know. So, but a couple experiences that have, okay, there's something to this faith. It might change. It might look different than in in my childhood, but there's something going on more than I can explain. But for the most part, my entire life, it's just been, no, it's been, you go to church, you do the things because that's what you should be doing. You read the Bible, but not having some of the more ecstatic experiences you see in some of the charismatic maybe, places. So, so you and could, being secretly jealous sometimes. You teased it a little bit, so maybe it's good for us to describe what knowing Jesus and maybe what is our our definitions of that and what uh, a spiritual experience, how we would define that. Because I bet we might not all use the same description of each of those things. Yeah, well, I'd say that if you're, well, I think Zach and I, and maybe you, we grew up in the faith. Yes. So we were born into it. Can't so you tell? Kinda, don't have that shine. It's kind of all we know. So I tend to feel like maybe we don't we don't we, have that one moment that changed. We were born again the first time. Yes, originally for OG. <laughs> Pre-born <laughs> again. But like you don't have that experience of like, oh, I had a spiritual experience and that's what brought me to Jesus. So not that we don't have experiences, but I don't think maybe we we. There was no clear conversion experience that you point to where I would say, where you would say, um, before this moment, um, I I didn't believe, and then I had an emotional spiritual experience that changed, that changed me, right? And and moving on, like that's Jeff's description. Yeah, he would say he, and it's his conversion experience. But lots of people have. I mean, there's a, a wide variety of conversion experiences. Sure. Well, and I think, like. You go on men's retreats and different things, and you can have experiences then. Yeah. Which sometimes I feel like people maybe aren't, they want to have an experience so bad, they maybe are missing them. So what's... Oh, they're missing the forest for the trees kind of a thing? Like it's... Yeah, like they're looking for whatever their expectation is, and it's just like right I think, in front of them. I think that's part of what she was describing there, is that that there is a maybe a personality type that elevates the chase of a spiritual experience above anything else. Mm-hmm. And sometimes at the risk of misunderstanding or misinterpreting events and saying, this is God, when it's like, well, no, you may have just hyped something up to believe that it, it was God, that it was a spiritual experience, but maybe it wasn't. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think one of the things, you know, it, it is a YouTube short, so it's probably part of a broader conversation or 
she, things are going without being said. So we're assuming some things. Uh, so there might be context missing. But the mystical thing she brought up, I'm going to s- just assume certain types of meditation. Like meditating on the world, word of God is a biblical thing. It's mentioned as something you do, like thinking, contemplating over the word of God. I don't think she would be against that, but she would probably strong caution or um, caution strongly against certain types of meditation where you're repeating mantras and you're trying to get into a zone or a trance in order to trigger an experience. And I would, there's a time where I'd be like, yeah, don't do that because you could be inviting something in that you don't know you know, you can't control these days. I'm like, it just depends on what you're focusing on. What are you, what is the fruit of what you're focusing on? What is your goal? Um, because you can find data for certain types of meditation being very good for you and very good for your brain that a lot of Christians on the more conservative side would really, that's fine. That, yeah. Caution against, because you might invite, open a window into the dark Lord's butthole. (laughs) <laughs> That's actually what the science says. That should be a bumper sticker. Uh, all meditation is not <laughs> controversial. To some Christians, actually, it is, but probably most Which, most is, Christians are it okay is biblical. with. It does it does say that to meditate on the word? Right. That's in the Bible, the actual Bible. I think what you're describing is people who are looking for like some sort of transcendent experience where they're getting outside of themselves, transcendental meditation, and opening, opening themselves to other influences and maybe doing so in a way that is uh, just questionable. Yeah. Uh, So like the manifesting and the, so like you going down that road as far as meditating, manifesting. Yeah. You literally might be opening something up to the spiritual realm that you let's start from the beginning have you seen ghostbusters i have seen ghostbusters (laughs) okay all four of them great that's what everyone was thinking (laughs) then basically that that's okay (laughs) yeah if you're uh the key master if you find yourself (laughs) claiming to be the key master maybe something's wrong gatekeeper yes uh so what i imagine yeah most people will will say hey you are opening yourself if you're opening yourself generally to to that i think that's one piece but i don't think that's what she's talking about i think what she's talking about more is the over spiritualization of of your life in general it's it's uh searching for additional meaning or activity that's happening in your life that isn't really there and you're doing it because you're trying to manifest this sort of type of this experience because you're chasing that type of experience and emotion. That's how I interpret that. Do you guys? Yeah, I see that. 